What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Ladies, Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell goes a long way for me on this video, goes a long way for you. You become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. I am just over the moon about Luka Doncic so far. Looking really good here in the first half. Hopefully we can get that across. I ended up on two units on that one. That was a pretty big stand I had. Need Dallas to win. I would love if they would cover. Not looking good. Thanks, Cleveland, for coming. Uh, it was a competitive game. I, yeah. Whatever. I don't know what to say about that. That was sad stuff. But uh, for the most part, Monday was an absolute smash. 7-1 and one there on the premium betting uh, the premium betting card. Everybody hit the Demonis Sabonis triple-double. Thank you to everybody for reaching out to me about that. The comment section, Twitter, even though... Twitter doesn't like me at the moment. No matter what it is, no matter what it is, I appreciate you guys for tuning in and for enjoying the content and finding some success. The word is success that I am trying to say. Uh, I always love seeing that all. Uh, but yeah, sign up for that premium betting card in the video description box below. Super, super easy. We also have NBA Bet Pro, which is just smashing in the prop streets. You can sign up for that below, as well as DraftKings. Bet $5, win $200 in bonus bets. I know a lot of you have already signed up for DK, but if you haven't, this is your best opportunity to do so. Uh, if you have a gambling problem, call winning 100 Gambler. But we've got 10 games to get to. 10 games, double digit. That is that many. That's a lot. I did a lot of analysis, a lot of news that is still pending. I'm going to talk you through as much as I possibly can. If you have any questions, ask me in the premium Discord. I'm always answering DMs all day over there. So another thing, I'm trying to give you guys access to me constantly as I'm making decisions, trying to figure out my own card so that I can help you make the best betting card you possibly can too. And all you parlay people, I know you exist. You guys want parlays. You want me to help you with parlays? I will do that for sure in the DMs as well. I try to talk you through the best way to go about building those. But 10 games, tons to get to. I've dilly-dallied enough. Let's get to the picks. It's party time, P-A-R-T. Why? Because I gotta. That had no point. I just wanted to make a Jim Carrey the mask reference. But it's the Pacers on the tail end of a back-to-back -back facing the facing the mech. Ooh, and the lack of balls missing on my person not to actually bet the Magic Plus 7 against the Celtics like I was supposed to, like my model told me I was supposed to. It's truly saddening when you miss opportunities like that, but it was a good enough day Monday. Tuesday, uh, we'll see how it pans out here. Need a couple of things to still go my way coming up later in the evening, but missed opportunity there on a Magic team that has had their number. Celtics won three straight against them. What planet are we on? But now they face a Pacers team on the back-to-back Pacers on the back-to-back, -back, that is, as four-and-a-half-point favorites. A little rich for my blood, although if forced to choose in anything here, I will go towards the Magic Camp for sure. But that's about the extent of my interest here at the moment. There's no props out yet, which is sad, because double dip on Paolo Bancaro was awesome on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Even ended up on the overall one-and-a-half threes, in addition to the 26-and-a-half points plus rebounds plus assists. Jonathan Isaac only played 10 minutes. Want to be looking a lot at those kind of things. Because again, Paulo Bancaro, that was a really low number on him. Eased, easily got there for us. Hopefully we have something similar tomorrow, but doubtful, doubtful. Pacers playing up in pace. They're on a back-to-back. -back. Lots to be determined here. I think the total looks efficient too. We'll just lean Magic minus four and a half, but special shout out to Jonathan Isaac. I know I just brought him back, but first game back in a long time. Just the 10 minutes, but 10 points and two threes. Just good to see him on a floor because he is really good at the game of basketball. Stay healthy, young man. Now, this game is interesting. The Nets heading to Philly to take on the Sixers. No Kevin Durant for the Nets, per usual, but it sounds like Joel Embiid is more likely than not to sit Wednesday. Yes, more than likely going to sit. That is sad because, of course, the talk will revolve nonstop on sports talk, TV, and radio around Ben Simmons and his return to Philadelphia. Well, what could go wrong? The Philadelphia fans are very calm, very chill. I'm sure nobody is going to go crazy based on whatever happens there on Sunday, right? Nobody. They won't burn down their own city again, whatever. Now, if I were a betting man, which I obviously am because I'm literally talking about myself right now, I would be fully aware that this could go very well for Simmons or go very poorly, and there's probably not a lot of middle ground. In my heart of hearts and in my honest basketball opinion, I think the Nets might give him a little extra run if he stays out of foul trouble. He's played upwards of 37 minutes lately, two games ago, so I will be paying very close attention to his props when they drop. 
I tried to make that rhyme, but then I said the S at the props. Whatever. Without Joel Embiid, pretty big question mark here. This falls into the category of the Nikola Jokic analysis from yesterday. If Embiid's in, I want nothing to do with this line, and it's surely going to balloon to seven or seven and a half. But if he's out, give me the plus five and a half right now with the Nets with uncertainty. I'm just going to call it a lean for now. But plus five and a half is where I would go. And by the way, I think the Nuggets are demolishing the Pelicans at the moment. Oh, it's a one-point game with three seconds. What a comeback by the Pelicans. They were down big early in that one. Uh, we'll see how that ends up panning out. I didn't end up betting it. Just wanted to do it as an interested sports fan. Let's continue on. Let's get to the actual bets, shall we? Washington, on the tail end of their back-to-back. -back. <sighs> so many of those today. The Rockets. They're facing the Rockets in Houston. And I was very adamant that five and a half was too many for the Rockets to be getting against my Timberwolves. Sad as that is. And I feel like that was a rather justified play. It was a comfortable W. We cashed it in. I wish it was the money line, but you say that a lot when your plus five and a half went out, right? Similar situation we got here on Tuesday, but Washington carries some question marks. Who plays on this back-to-back? -back? Specifically, can Bradley Beal even play on a back-to-back -back coming off a hamstring injury in recent months? I feel as though he's the centerpiece question mark here, as the Rocket side has Jabari Smith, who I like as a young piece, but Tari Eason, he's been starting in his place, and there's legitimately zero drop-off, maybe even the opposite, maybe even a little bit of an upgrade. He carries an absurd 93rd percentile defensive plus-minus grade. That is absurd on dunks and threes, and I know he can score the ball. He did it just fine at LSU, although... The shooting struggles have definitely been there for the 17th pick in last year's draft. What I'm getting here, starting Eason may be more valuable than Jabari Smith at the moment, although it's not really going to move the line for me a lot. I'm just saying Jabari Smith, the touted pick, going up against Tari Eason. At the moment, Eason's straight up if you're trying to win one basketball game to save your life. Luckily, that's not the case here. I like me a like play, though, backing the Rockets for a second straight game, which feels something kind of insane something an insane person would do. I'm totally normal. But Alpern Shangun has been an insane person himself, absent Kevin Porter Jr. of late, uh, routinely, routinely getting himself in the triple-double conversation. Not going to dabble yet. I don't want to put my hard-earned five-in-a-row streak on Alpern Shangun here against Washington, although I thought about it. We're just going to go Houston plus three. Oh, I want to think about it more now. Oh, why did I even bring it up? Houston plus three. We got to go on. We got to go. Look at this cheeky little guy. Oh, 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 emphasis on the cheeks. I need to probably drink less beer. But bet $5, win $200 in bonus bets. That is a pretty great deal. If you haven't signed up yet for DraftKings Sportsbook, this is the best opportunity you will ever get here. If you bet $5, bucks, you are going to get $200 regardless of what that bet does. So you want to put 5 bucks on an Alper and Shangun triple-double that I don't have the balls to? You're going to get yourself 200 bucks. You want to put $5 on a, I don't know, 15-leg parlay just for the heck of it? You're going to still get $200. Now, you could also get a massive payout on anything. So I'm saying $5, a wager on any market, gets you that 200 bucks. It's a can't-lose type scenario. So if you're 21 and over, please play responsibly. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. That's all. More picks, please. Oh me, oh my. It's the Denver Nuggets on their back-to-back. -back. Let's check back in. Did they win? <gasps> they won by one. Yay. Smashing. Yay, capitalism. Austin Powers quotes. They slap every time. But tons of back-to-backs. And why wouldn't Denver be on a back-to-back? -back? But this one is especially brutal because they have to face Milwaukee on their turf with all their core pieces back. Just Bobby Portis, who will be out for this one. And Denver... Do they rest Jokic after he was ruled in on Tuesday? Does Michael Porter Jr. rejoin the team? Very sad circumstances surrounding him and his departure here with his brother. But yep, just another spot that will have to be discussed in detail in the premium Discord or in the comments section below tomorrow. But for the time being, this is going to be a very short piece of analysis because I'm obviously leaning Milwaukee because even the chance of Joker sitting is a downgrade. There won't be any props here forever. Very sad stuff. Again, hopefully Michael Porter Jr. is doing all right. Uh, sounds just like an awful situation there with his brother. But uh, looking forward, looking forward to Milwaukee Moneyline. Doubt there's going to be any value there, especially if Joker sits. That will be nothing. Oh, goody. Yet another team on back to back. Great.
At least there's a line in the tunnel here. It's my wretched Timberwolves going to New Orleans to face the Pelicans. Hey, hey, Pelicans. Where are they at in their game at the moment? Oh, no, oh, yeah, that's right. They lost to Denver by one. I remember they were playing each other. Good stuff. Uh, but it's my wretched Timberwolves team, as I said. And wouldn't you know it, Rudy Gobert wrote, returned against Houston on Monday, and they immediately lose. Now, it's not Gobert's fault. He actually looked the best he's looked in a long time against Houston. I watched a lot of that game. Terry Eason got everything he wanted against him anyway, but that's a different guy. Box score says he played well. We'll go with that. But this team has no hope without Anthony Edwards playing God ball or Kyle Anderson playing way above his head like he's been doing for the last two weeks. It's sad times, as I would really like to just jam them here against a Pelicans team that could rest a number of players on the second leg of a back-to-back. -back. And Dyson Daniels went down, so they're a little bit short on uh, backcourt depth. And they'll certainly be without Ingram. And Zion's out like another two weeks. And ugh, you got to hate it here if you're a Pelicans fan. So what do we do? Well, there's a line, but there's no props yet. Although, CJ McCollum points. If he's active, you find him 25 and a half, 26 and a half. That seems neat against Minnesota. They've been giving up a lot of the old points to teams here of lately. But I bet against my squad last game, I'm always happy to do it again. But I actually like them here, getting the two and a half on the road. I have this projected around four, so not anything, anything, not even like a full unit like here at the moment. Maybe the number adjusts a little bit back in our favor, but there's always the chance that Pelicans, teams on these back-to-backs, rule guys out from the clouds. Hell, we saw Jimmy Butler, not even on a back-to-back, -back, just being general soreness. That was a general joke. But either way, Minnesota plus two and a half like button. Check this out, fam. The OKC Thunder are one game away from being a 500 basketball team on January 25th in the year of our Lord 2023. That is wild stuff. Josh Giddy, SGA, too damn good to be held down for too long. And now they face this Hawks team. Could you imagine this team with Chet Holmgren right now? Did you watch Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga? Did you watch him over the course of the summer league? Like, unbelievably good. I would be just over the moon watching them. They would be a playoff basketball team. I'm just throwing it out there, but a uh, conversation for a different day. They have a million picks. I'm pretty sure they're happy about that. They're also probably happy to be facing this down on their luck Hawks team. So up and down, they'd make a great roller coaster. Wins against Miami and Dallas on the road. Then at home, a loss to Charlotte. And then going to Chicago, losing in Chicago last time out. <gasps> but we haven't talked props on the show yet, have we? Let's say it's about time, yeah? Yeah, I think it is. I love me some props. Sadly, I was on the Trey Young points prop on Monday. Only losing bet for me on my premium card. Seven and one, no big deal. I'm good at this. But the logic is sound, in my opinion. He's hitting routinely, routinely, 25 and a half there in the old prop department here of late. It's just a little above minus 110, I will say. But he's averaging 27 on the season. And he has been shooting the ball horrendously of late one for seven over oh four over oh five from three that's his last three games but do you know what happens when he starts hitting shots he murders this number i looked at alternate numbers i'm not sure uh, if the 30 plus is something that i want to be dabbling in here yet i would like it to be a little bit more inflated but i think he absolutely bludgeons this to the ends of the earth Oklahoma City, fourth in pace this season. They're top 10 in defensive rating. Yay for them. But Atlanta, they're at ninth. So more possessions. So more possessions in this game for both sides of it against a backcourt of Shea and Giddy. One can really defend, one can't. <laughs> Obviously, you want more of the Giddy defense on you. I'm just going towards Young here. I think he pops off in a big way. In fact, I'm doubling down on my love for Trey Young at this number considering the minimal juice. It's inside of minus 125 right now. Lock button. Yeah, just lock button 25 and a half points. Why? Why are we not just lock buttoning this to the ends of the earth? We'll, well, we are. There we go. Hit it. We move on. Four late night games. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Absolutely the best. I love late night basketball because then I'm done recording this one and I get to just sit and kick it with my dog by a fireplace. Cuddle it. It's nice. It's nice. Anyway, we kick it off with the Grizzlies against the Warriors. Back-to-back -back miserable losses for Memphis. And now they'll be without Steven Adams and John Conchar for this one. Golden State, totally healthy. Really, really healthy. Like, everybody's back. And we haven't been Golden State riders a lot this season on this program. But my sheet says... Double check. 
Oh yeah, I'm three for three, taking them as outrights this season. The Spurs thrashing in San Antonio being the most recent W here, where they easily covered for us. Oh, don't bet against them at the Alamo. <laughs> Remember the Alamo, friends? <laughs> I don't get how we aren't backing them here. Just two and a half at FanDuel.com. Sure, John Morant's out, out last game. Sacramento bludgeoned them. 13200 Thanks for coming. Drive home safely. Shoot the beam off in Sacramento. But this is a spot that I think very little credit is going towards the defending champions at home who have better things happening for them of late. Getting step right back, kind of important. But starting to shift some things around for the better. Jordan Poole inserted into the starting lineup over Kevon Looney and will going forward... I love the Draymond Green death lineup. You know, they call it the death lineup where he plays at center. Makes sense. You have a ton of shooters on the floor. Play your best players a lot. DiVincenzo being adequate ammo off the ben bench. Anthony Lamb playing decent minutes. Oh, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green. Back to their respective tricks. That trio has been good for a long damn time. And Clay Thompson back healthy. Steph Curry back healthy. Draymond Green playing high, but... High IQ basketball. In fact, I have this modeled out as five point favorites. Two and a half points through the key number of three, and then another two points above that. My oh my. Give me that lock button again, friends. My favorite play on the board for tomorrow. I get it. Memphis, really good defensively. Get John Morant back. Do not care. Watch Golden State shoot it out of the gym. Kind of an interesting spot coming up next. We've got Utah visiting Portland, and we saw Damian Lillard and Yusuf Nurkic just go completely insane. And I've had a tough time putting down what's going on with Yusuf Nurkic's minutes. He has not eclipsed 30 minutes since January 12th. Now, they've played a lot of basketball since then. One, two, three, four, five, six games since then. He has not hit the 30-minute mark. But when he's on the floor, he is effective. When he's out of foul trouble, he's effective. Jeremy Grant had some massive, massive games in some of those spots where you have Yusuf Nurkic being limited. They go to a small ball five type situation. But for me, Anthony Simons alongside Damian Lillard, two guys who are very, very high in the old usage department. I think for me, it just makes Jeremy Grant shorting some of his props really, really nice. And I should at least touch on the Utah spot before I revisit and just give you the play I just gave you. But either way, Utah, Laurie Markkinen, keep it up, young man. Really fun to watch him excel. I've talked a million times about Walker Kessler on this program. I don't know what else I can say other than I am sad and a broken person that he is not wearing a Timberwolves uniform. But anyway, back to Jeremy Grant. We're taking the under. Yeah, you heard me. The under of 19 and a half points. The usage under 20% here when you have all of these pieces healthy. Yusuf Nurkic coming off a big game. Usually another center like a big, like Walker Kessler on the other side solidified in those minutes and when you have Nurkic on the floor more with Jeremy Grant 19 and a half is too big of a number here for him I only have this ever so slightly uh right around 17 17 and a half so uh, not like a full bore slam it kind of a thing but a nice nice little like that we have here for Jeremy Grant Toronto at Sacramento is up next Delmonis Sabonis down to plus 205 in the triple double good category just think about that for a second he was north of plus 225 everywhere. This is a 20 cent drop off in a more difficult matchup considering Pascal Siakam's his opposing center as opposed to Xavier Tillman. Whatever, just wanted to point it out. We're not betting it today, but I just wanted to say, you follow me, I'm going to find you value. That is my job here. My job here is to find you the best play from every single game. I'll touch on other plays constantly, but it feels nice. Feels nice when you're ahead of the curve on a play. It's still something that could borderline jump onto your card, but I'm not going to do it this time around because I do respect Pascal Siakam, and it's not my favorite play from this game. It's actually going to Pascal Siakam. I've been paying attention to his rebounding rate for a while. They have moved Precious Achua into the starting lineup, and he's played some massive minutes the last two. Boston, 37. The Knicks, 36 minutes. Toronto started to play a little bit better basketball, and it's really limited Pascal Siakam's rebounding upside. But I'm not necessarily sure that that's going to be something that they want to be doing long term here. And you start getting some of these starting lineups with a smaller four, or you get Trey Lyles playing the five on the floor, and Pascal Siakam is going to see the rebounding rate come up. This is also a game in Sacramento. We know the pace. Everybody up, up, up in pace. 238 and a half. You don't see many Toronto games with this many possessions, and more possessions means more rebound opportunity. Hashtag math. So. There is a double-double prop on DraftKings. If you guys want to use that five bucks right now, 
to get yourself access to that $200 in bonus bets. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. But you want to make sure, make sure you take advantage of it with Pascal Siakam to double-double plus 190. The points are a foregone conclusion. Barring injury, there is no situation where he doesn't have double-digit points. In fact, he has not had a single game this entire season where he has not reached double-digit points. So that's the easy one. The rebounds are what I'm emphasizing here. And I do think this is a spot where they could go to some smaller lineups and get away from the duo of Pascal Siakam and uh, and my guy, who I just talked about, Precious Achua. My, my Precious Achua. Those are two jokes in one. Pascal Siakam to double-double. I like it. And our last game of the night, what a bummer. Spurs. Greg Popovich and the Spurs. Boo. Boo. They're only six and a half point dogs here. Going to Los Angeles here. It depends on what book. There's a couple of sixes laying around there. But all I know, LeBron James, he's chasing. Chasing, chasing. Chasing cars. That was a good song, Once Upon a Time. I'd rather talk about that than this basketball game. But I know LeBron James, he'll do it all. Everything. But he also might not play. That would be problematic. So I'm just saying, if you're backing the Lakers, you have a chance of having LeBron sit on these back-to-backs. The man's 38 years old. He's still without Anthony Davis. They're going to try to win this game, the battle for uh, LA against the Clippers. And I think the, the Lakers think they have a much better chance to win this game than they did the Clippers one. So maybe you just rest LeBron and you plan out to rest him here. I think if you had to do anything, you'd prospectively take the Spurs here. But that's not my favorite play here. My favorite play has to be the over uh, Spurs play no defense. They have no desire to Devin Vassell. Yeah, sure. He can't score the basketball in any way, shape or form for him at the moment because he's out, but you still get a pretty good, decent shooting situation with Keldon Johnson, Trey Jones, no defense. I'm leaning over to 42 and a half, but to be honest, I've never seen a basketball game. I did not want to watch more in my entire life. So what a bummer end to the show, but it is what it is. Friends. Lean that way. Don't watch this one. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Head to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays on the board for Wednesday. Going to be a massive slate 10 gamer. I'm already nervous. I might have a little bit too much going here, but you can always sign up over at DraftKings. Bet $5. Guarantee yourself a win. Get that $200 in bonus bets. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. 21 and over. That's the only people who can take opportunity or take op take. What am I even trying to say? It doesn't matter. I'm going to get myself up out of here. I'll see you all again on Thursday. Looking forward to it. We have the premium Discord down there. We have the DraftKings link down there. We have everything down there in the comment section below. Make sure you give that a gander on your way out. And hit the like button. That goes away for me. That'd be nice. But I'll be back Thursday. Until then, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Wednesday.